Hello again, I am Blunty, and on my recent adventuring in Japan, I did many fun things, and one of the many fun things I remember doing was visiting CP+, a camera and photo imaging show. It's a big industry convention expo thingy, started in 2010 to show off all the new shiny stuff about or orbiting nearby the planets of photography and video. Now, as regular viewers will already know, I was here by invite of Nikon, so of course the very first booth I hit up was theirs. And yeah, I know it doesn't look that crowded right now, but this was first thing in the morning and the general public wouldn't even be flooding through the doors for a few hours yet. Nikon were of course focused on showing off the D4 and D800, the two new pro-level DSLRs that'll be hitting shelves quite soon, and they even had a lovely colourful stage set up with a few demo cameras to play with as a couple of lovely models who looked slightly bored while what I assume are cherry blossoms fluttered down on them and dozens of lenses were pointed in their general direction. Deeper in the depths of their booth, Nikon had displays of other gear of course, including film bodies of days past if you were feeling particularly nostalgic or old. Right next to them stood Canon's booth of course, and I must admit their lens display was far prettier than Nikon's, who'd crammed them in small glass booths, sure to be soon hideous with finger grease. Not that I want to ignite a Canon Nikon fanboy argument here, those kids get vicious. No, no, wait, 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 not vicious, I meant the other word. Uh, what am I thinking of? Oh, stupid! I meant to say those kids get stupid. Very, very stupid. Near my Epson were I don't know, trying to make printers sound interesting or something. Frankly, I hurried by in desperate fear that I may drop into an endless boredom coma. Further on, I found a booth with a display of what looked like paper masks for a child's birthday party or something. It took me a moment to figure out that they were actually made to protect your eyeballs when viewing the upcoming solar eclipse, which I'm guessing Japan is in a particularly good position to view from, because I saw these all over the place. Rather cool, I thought. I also spotted this Rotolite interview kit thingy on display, which caught my eye mainly for the fact that I was sent a loaner kit just before I left for Japan, and I'll have a review on them soon, but, you know, spoiler alert or whatever, it's probably going to be a favourable review because these things are really quite nifty. And now a booth filled with all kinds of conversion lenses for mirrorless cameras and mobile phones and the like. It caught my eye, but these honestly are not usually the best way to get the very best image quality that you can hope for. For that, you really want a purpose-built lens, not some screw on accessory. But they are very often quite quirky and fun to play with, and annoyingly overpriced and hard to find in such variety and quantity on my own native soil. So to see them in such quantity and range was very cool. Then, gathering crowds in the corner was what I'd been hoping to see. A big, bright Olympus booth, because here is where I'd find their newest and very intriguing little beastie, the OMD. Now, you can bet your bum I'll be tapping the local Aussie Olympus team for a review model, because it's got some very neat bells and whistles that I want to dig into, but for now I was happy enough to lay eyes on it. It's much smaller than it seems in the press shots they released the day before when it was officially announced. In fact, it's barely larger than the Pen EP3, really, which surprised me. But damn dude, what a beautiful piece of industrial design, especially in the silver. I know the looks of a camera have no bearing on its performance, but still, pretty is pretty. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to sit and wait in the ever-growing line for some real hands-on with it. There was far too much else to see. Like the traditional, oh look, this thing's waterproof, you can tell by the fact that we have it in a fish tank, display. A selection of mini tripod flavours, none of which were as nice or as reliable as a proper gorilla pod. An iPhone mounted on a slider and tripod head worth far more than the phone itself for some super duper stupid overkill. Over at the Lumix booth there was, I don't know, a model and some merchandise from a zoo for some reason. Random, but eye-catching I guess, which is probably the point. And for some unfathomable reason, Casio put their model in front of a giant flickering LED screen. Perhaps just to make sure no one could take anything close to an attractive shot anywhere near their booth? Because frack you, that's why! Whatever Dalt built their booth was clearly a designer proud of their work, but not someone who knew sweet dick all about cameras and what happens when you point them at big flickery screens like that. Duh. And um, also a golf thingy because Japanese businessmen love golf and I guess the camera has some kind of goofy golf shot mode or something. Whatever. 
Nearby, there was a bunch of tripods and a model with ridiculously fake eyelashes. I'm not familiar with the brand, but I did spot something I liked. They had a tripod designed to fold flat, so it's much, much easier to pack into a bag. I have seen this approach before, but only on crappy, cheapo aluminium jobbies. This one was built properly, and better yet, out of carbon fibre, so it was super light and very, very strong. And the build looked very good too. It's definitely something I'm going to have to look into. And then I got distracted. I have no idea what these guys were actually selling and I didn't really care that much. Because, you know... Huh? Okay, okay, just to be fair to them, they sell a range of flash and strobe units and I've actually heard very good things about the quality and value. And these are the jizzled, blinged up lens caps because, well, you know, the Japanese are kooky sometimes. Frankly, I can't think of much else more ridiculous to stick on my camera, but yeah, there you go. Then over to the Pentax booth to check out another interesting brand new camera body system thingy. The hideous, but very interesting K01. It's the first mirrorless system camera to be able to natively use the entire range of lenses from its older DSLR brotherhood. And it has many of the nifty tricks and features found in my beloved Pentax Q as well. I'm going to gloss over it here because it's going to get its own video soon. But I have to admit, in person it is slightly less ugly than it seems. But only slightly. All the same, I have a feeling this might be an ugly duckling kind of deal. Don't judge it for being a misshapen monster because its insides promise very intriguing things. Then I found the Kippon booth, who rather awesomely make adapters to let you use just about any lens from anyone on any camera from anyone else, which can lead to all kinds of very interesting combinations. Sadly, much to the burning embarrassment of the booth attendant, he couldn't seem to get his demo unit to work for me at all. After several attempts on three different camera bodies and four different battery changes. But I assure you, they do work, and they do work quite well as a matter of fact. It's about this time that the show floor started to flood with the ever-growing dull roar of people as the doors opened to the general public. And so I shot off for a nice quiet spot of lunch. And I also had a bunch of tiny little cakes for dessert, which were delicious, but they were also so astonishingly sweet, I went blind for a short while. It's totally worth it. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.